Is there is that true? All in all. All in all, yes, it has to be. And I, I don't. Th well, it would be a toss-up between Beethoven and Bach. Beethoven is immensely approachable. It's uh, music that is uh, very demanding. Actually, uh, uh, Bach is demanding in a different sort of way, in that it blanks out everything else. Beethoven, uh, when one listens to it, at least in my case, when I listen to it, I should say, I find that I get involved into the emotions of the thing, and it brings in a lot of personal. Beethoven? Yes, brings yes. in personal things about me, whereas Bach is just pure music, and I become Bach, as it were, just listening to it. Pure Beethoven, music. Beethoven, it's me that's listening, mm -hmm. if you understand what I'm saying. Oh, I surely do. The uh, uh, Beethoven has a certain ego consciousness about his music, and just stroke every aspect of our psyche, it seems. So I think we personally relate to him, and... Uh, what bothers me is that the Beethoven of the grand manner or the ethical philosophical Beethoven is is the one that we consider the great Beethoven but to me the equally great Beethoven is in the sonata that will be coming up now opus 14 number one and then followed by opus 14 number two in G major and other works which are not is highly touted mm -hmm but uh, show him to have all this universality, this humor. For instance, the unbelievable uh, opening movement to the Sonata in G major, Opus 79. Not known, not even difficult mm -hmm. compared to Opus 81A, the Les Adieux. Uh, but the rhythmical propulsion for me if I had to choose between the Eroica and the Seventh Symphony, let's say, I'll take the Seventh any day. This mm -hmm. is pure music. Wagner once called it the apotheosis of the dance. Mm -hmm. uh, I get tired of the uh, fate knocks on the door part of Beethoven. Um.
beautiful performance by Richter of the E major sonata first movement. Now this is the Beethoven I hold dearly. This movement is often played too fast. It's really quite reflective, as you heard mm -hmm. Richter's performance, and uh, I thought it was beautiful. I have nothing to add except... Berg, who plays Beethoven very beautifully. And we'll try to get to her playing soon. Let's have another performance, this time by the celebrated Beethoven player, Wilhelm Kempf.
Oh, lovely performance by Wilhelm Kempf of the E Major Sonata. Also a very fine tempo. More classically oriented, mm -hmm. more delicately conceived than the Richter, who, who gets soft here and there. Mm -hmm. That's an exquisite piece of music. I mean, it stands on its own, and I just can't imagine it being played any other way. Any other way than this? Well... Mr. Glenn Gould is up, and uh, as I said before, this movement is often taken too fast. I don't know the Gould performance, but I have a sneaking suspicion that the tempo will be quick. Mr. Edwards, I cannot believe it, because uh, if anyone else in the world had played that movement like that, I would have said this is the playing of a supreme pig. But it works. David. And it works. I it don't works. know how this Mr. Gould does it. Well, someone called me yesterday, and we, or you had better explain what you mean by works in this particular case. Well, I don't know what, it, what, what, how to explain what works. It works, didn't it? It, absolutely charming, absolutely charming. Who would think that you could play that movement that fast and uh, have it make any sort of sense on any sort of level, musical or otherwise? It's it's amazing, man. Uh, those fingers are. Really, they, they rank with Horowitz in, in evenness. Uh, well, I think we should play Schnabel as a contrast.
Well, Mr. Edwards, that was Arthur Schnabel. And actually, I have no comment about it. I mean, it's, it's a very touching performance, but it, uh, it doesn't strike one almost in the face as Gould did. Or Kemp for me, or uh, Richter. Richter it has very fine. that warmth that Schnabel was able to project. Okay, we'll be back with the slow movement. Milan, Beethoven's quartets, needless to say, with great admiration. I also knew some of his works for piano. At Vienna, I heard for the first time the Eroica. The work knocked me over. Now I had but one idea, to make the acquaintance of this greatest living genius, to see him if only once. Rossini speaking. So I approached Celeri, whom I knew to be in touch with Beethoven. The Italian composer thought it best for me to find the Italian poet who was close to Beethoven, Carpani, and in that way I would be able to be received. Well, shall I confess it? When I mounted the stairs leading to the poor lodgings of this great man, I barely mastered my emotions. When the door opened, I found myself in a sort of attic, terribly disordered and dirty. I remember particularly the ceiling. It was under the roof and showed crevices through which the rain could not help pouring down in streams. There's a little note that says this was actually Beethoven's workroom at that time. His quarters were in somewhat better conditions. But can you imagine, perhaps, mm -hmm. the rain pouring down as he's writing the Appassionata? Well, can you imagine <laughs> Stravinsky living like that? Yeah. No, I can't. Um, uh, Rossini goes on. The portraits of Beethoven, which we know, reproduce fairly well his physiognomy. But what no etcher's needle could express was the indefinable sadness spread over his features while from under heavy eyebrows his eyes shone as from out of caverns, and though small, they seemed to pierce one. 
the voice was soft and slightly veiled. When we entered, at first he paid no attention to us, but for some moments after bending over proofs he had just finished, he then raised his head and said in fairly comprehensible Italian, Ah, Rossini, you, you are the composer of the Barber of Seville. My congratulations. That is an excellent opera buffa. I have read it with great pleasure. I enjoyed myself. It will be played so long as Italian opera will exist. Beethoven was quite a good critic. Do never try, though, your hand at anything but opera buffa. You would be doing violence to your destiny by wanting to succeed in a different genre. And it goes on and on, and he could never really get to, to tell Beethoven his admiration for him. Beethoven was so excited about the Barber of Seville. Anyway, when Rossini descended those dilapidated stairs, he writes, I retained of my visit to this great man an impression so painful, thinking of this destitution and shabbiness, that I could not repress my tears. The poet Carpani, Carpani said, Ah, but Rossini, perhaps that's what he wants. He is misanthropic, cranky, and can't keep friends. He managed to keep Salieri as a friend, which I find sort of interesting, because Salieri was the rumored poisoner of Mozart, if Mozart indeed died that way. No, of course not. And of course, you know there's an opera by Rimsky-Korsakov, Rimsky Mozart and Soleri, which uh, discusses this. Because uh, during that time, Mo Mozart was writing successful operas, and uh, Soleri was a, uh, was a, a big hit formally, and Mozart usurped him, and uh, Soleri was uh, a type of man who... Uh, uh, looked oh. for fame, and uh, they they actually ma made a rumor that uh, uh, Mozart was was poisoned by this poor man. Now Soleri lives in uh, lives in um, a terrible reputation. I'm glad the LP record is rectifying that a bit because he's mm -hmm. a very very, very charming fine composer, composer of no great no mm -hmm. great. Uh, I find it strange that uh, if. Salieri was really uh, held to be the murderer of Mozart, that uh, Beethoven would befriend him. That sounds like something that uh, yes, because Beethoven would do. Beethoven adored all of Mozart. The only thing he did not like was he found the libretto to Don Giovanni immoral. <laughs> That's sort of strange, considering the rumors about Beethoven's own death and the cause of his deafness and so on. Mm. Well, now we shall hear. major opus 14 it's marked allegretto who is the performer this is claudio rao fine
that singing allegretto, so touching, which is the slow movement of the sonata in E major, opus 14, number one. Another performance, but the Rascoda. de Rascota in not quite as charming a performance of this movement as we heard in a row playing it. Now we have Robert Riefling.
Oh, that was Robert Riefling in the slow movement of the Opus 14, number one. And you see the power of the performer. He can destroy as well as make more beautiful. And I don't know where he got those dynamics from, uh, but he crushed this poor tender flower miserably. And we'll